Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. It has occurred to me that I haven't done a questions and answers video in quite some time. So, this is episode 15 of questions and answers, and in this episode, I will answer five Lightroom-related questions. And our first question is from Derek. Could you tell me, please, what happens to my Lightroom catalog if I stop my monthly subscription and buy another program like Luminar or on one photo raw or something like that. Well, two modules will stop working, the develop module and the map module. Of course, if you're not paying Adobe for a Creative Cloud subscription any longer, they're not going to let you process any images. So if you clicked on the develop module, you'll just get a warning saying that that module is disabled. And the same thing for the map module. And the reason why they're disabling their map module is because they're getting their maps from Google and they have to pay Google a fee. And if you're not paying them for Lightroom, they're, they don't want to pay Google for the map. So they disable that, that module as well. Also, you won't be able to sync with Lightroom Mobile, but the library module, the book module, slideshow, print, and web modules all will keep working. Uh, pretty much everything else works. You'll be able to export images. You just won't be able to process them or do anything with the map module as well or any syncing to Lightroom Mobile. So I hope that answered your question. The next question is from Curtis. Help. In my library module, the parent folder shows zero images, but the images are in the subfolders. It seems the number shown for the images in each folder is wrong. All right, to kind of get a better idea what Curtis was talking about, I asked him to send me some screenshots of what he's encountering. And to better explain to you, let's go over to my left-hand panel. And if you look, I have a hard drive that I call Lightroom. That's where I keep my, my images. And on that hard drive, I have a number of subfolders. And you can see I have this parent folder called Lightroom Raw Files. And in that folder, I have 53,293 images. And within that folder, I also have a number of subfolders. And you can see all the subfolders here. And there's numbers next to those subfolders. Those are the number of images inside of that subfolder. And what's happening with Curtis is he just pretty much has all zeros there. And what probably happened is he accidentally hit a setting. If you were in the library module and you go up to the top menu where it says library, click on that and you go down, you can see this one menu choice, show photos in subfolders. Notice how mine is checked. If I uncheck that, what happens is we have all these zeros now and I'm clicked on my parent folder and I'm not seeing any images at all. And that's what's happening to Curtis. If that happens to you, just go to the library module, go up to the top library menu and make sure show photos in subfolders is checked and you'll get everything back again. I'm not really sure why that's a feature of Lightroom. It just seems kind of odd to me. So that took, or takes care of that. Our next question is from Tyler. I use the white balance eyedropper all the time. I used to be able to click and click and click until I got to my desired white balance, but with a recent update, I now have to click on the tool each time. Okay, what Tyler is talking about, if we go over to the develop module and we go to the basic panel, you can see we have the eyedropper tool. And if we click on it, the cursor becomes that. Now, if I want to get a new white balance, I'll click on the image. And you'll notice when I click, it went back, it like adjusted the image, but the tool went back over here. And what Tyler is saying, he used to be able to click, 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 click. Instead, now he has to reactivate the tool and click on the image, then go over back and reactivate the tool and click on the image. And that slows him up. Why is that? Well, if we look below the image, to this little strip of real estate. This is called the toolbar. If you're not seeing the toolbar, hit the T key on your keyboard. It turns that toolbar off and on. Now I'm gonna activate the tool by clicking on it and we're gonna look down here in the toolbar and if you look at the far left hand side, it says WB for white balance, colon, and then it has auto dismiss. And you can see it's checked. Uncheck that box. Now you could click and click and click and click and click to your heart's delight. And it will not put the tool away until you put the tool away. So super easy. Just remember, activate the tool, 
go down to the toolbar and make sure that auto dismiss is not checked. If you don't see the toolbar, hit the T key on your keyboard to make it appear. I'll put that tool away and we'll go to our next question from Pat. I think you once did a video on how to get more precise slider adjustments, but I can't find that video. I find when I adjust sliders like exposure, it either moves too much or too little, and I find it hard to dial in exactly what I want. Um, yeah, I, I have like so many videos. I know over 800 videos, and it's hard to find the video where I covered that one little thing you're talking about. But I'll show you in this video how to do it. Now, what Pat is referring to any slider, I'll do exposure as he mentioned here. Sometimes with some images, you just can't get it dialed in. You're moving your mouse and it's just either going a little too much or a little too little and it's hard to kind of get it exactly how you want it. Well, if you want a more precise adjustment, there's one of three things you could do. Hover over the slider with the mouse. So you're hovered over it. Then go over to your up and down arrow keys. In this case, I'll hit the up arrow key and you'll notice it moves in increments of 0 0.10. So I'll hit the up again, 0 0.20, up arrow. And I'll keep hitting the up arrow. And you can see how it's moving in those increments of 0 0.10. Now I'll hit the down arrow key and it's moving in those increments as well. To get an even more precise adjustment, hold the Alt or Option key when you do it. It's Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac. Now hit the up arrow key and it's going in 0 0.02 increments. So we're really getting precise now. Now, of course, these increments change depending what slider you're doing. Exposure is really moving f-stops. If we're on, let's say, whites, it's just kind of moving a value. So if I use the up key, up arrow key, it's moving in values of 5. So there's plus 5, plus 10, plus 15, and so on, down arrow key, down arrow key similarly in increments of 5. If I hold the Alt or Option key in and then hit the up arrow key, now it's increments of one. So that will help you better dial in that slider adjustment, one of those two methods. The third method I mentioned is you could kind of widen this panel and it will make the sliders longer and they are a little more precise when they're longer. And to do that, just go out to the edge of the panel until your cursor turns into that kind of double arrow. Click with the left mouse button and just drag the panel out so it's thicker. And when you do that, the sliders are thicker also, so it helps you better dial in. You kind of got a little bit more of throw, they call it, on the slider. So that helps you better dial it in. Personally, I prefer my side panels a bit smaller, and if I really do need to dial in a precise adjustment, I will just hover over the slider in question and I'll hold the Alt or Option key in. In my case, because I have a Mac, it's an Option key, and then I'll hit the up or down arrows to really precisely dial in the amount I need. Final question is from Bill. Lightroom is taking up a ton of space on my hard drive. Is there a way to compress it so it takes up less space? No, but check for two things. When you import images, there's an option for your previews. If you use one-to-one -one previews and or smart previews, those take up a lot of disk space. So I would recommend that you set that to minimal, especially if you have limited hard drive space. Um, for the heck of it, let's just go over to library module and I'll bring up the import dialog. And specifically what I'm talking about is right here on the right-hand panel where it says build preview. See how it's set to minimal? If you have that set to one-to-one -to -one and or you have build smart previews checked, you're going to be taking up a lot of disk space with the previews. Go to minimal if you have very limited disk space. If your disk space is okay, you're just taking up more than you'd like, then go to standard and that will help you render the images faster. The downside of going to minimal over one-to-one -one is that when you're down here in the film strip and you're paging through your images, it will take a minimal preview a little longer to render than it will a one-to-one. -one. And the disadvantage of not using a smart preview is if you have your images on an external hard drive like I do, that hard drive has to be plugged in for you to edit your images. But if you use smart previews, 
you don't need that hard drive plugged in and you'll be able to edit your images. But those previews take up a lot of space. So check your previews, number one. Number two is check your catalog backup. By default, Lightroom will back up your catalog, I think, if I remember right, every time you shut Lightroom down. If you're in Lightroom a lot, it's going to back up the catalog a lot. And it really doesn't manage those backups very well. It just keeps all the old backups there and they keep building up, building up, building up, taking up more and more disk space. So to find those catalogs or where they are, hopefully if you did, if you, you have the option of putting them where you want, uh, it's not kind of an obvious option. If you did that, hopefully you remember where you put them. If not, if you just use the Lightroom default, go up uh, to the Lightroom, if you have a Mac, go up to the Lightroom menu. If you have a PC, go to the Edit menu and go to Catalog Settings. And you can see right here it says Backup. And I think, if I remember right, by default it's every time Lightroom exits. So every time you close down Lightroom, it's going to back up the catalog. To find where those are, go right here. It says Location of where the catalog is kept. Go click on Show. And if you have a Mac, Mac Finder will open up. If you have a PC, File Explorer will open up. Either way, you'll be on your Lightroom catalog. Open up that folder, and within that folder, you'll see a folder called Backups. Click on that. Now, I only have one backup because I don't back up my images, or I don't back, I'm sorry, don't back up my catalog. It's not your images, it's your Lightroom catalog. I don't back up my catalog in that manner. I use uh, folder mirroring and I back it up to, mul to multiple hard drives and to the cloud as well. And I do have a couple videos that kind of demonstrate my kind of convoluted backup method. It's all automatic. I don't have to do anything. That's why I like it. But it is kind of confusing and it's a little bit too much to get into in this video since I already covered it in two other videos. But Back to this, we have this folder. If I click on that, and there's your backup, it's zipped, so it's compressed. The backup is compressed. But you can see it's 313 megabytes big. If you back up every single time you close down Lightroom, or once a week even, even if you do it once a week, after a year, you're going to have 52 of these in there, and they're going to be taking up quite a bit of disk space. What I recommend is you delete all of them except the last three or four. Why you want to keep the last three or four is just in case one or two of them are corrupt, you have another one, hopefully, that isn't corrupt. So just delete them and just keep, like I said, the last couple, three, four, whatever you feel comfortable with, and you'll, be, you'll recover a lot, of, a lot of disk space. So personally, like I mentioned, I don't back up my catalog in that manner, so I set that to never. That's it for this video. Thank you everyone that asked questions and thank you everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.